Okay, so coming from the garden metaphor of Jana right now, uh, I'll try to extend that. And what you see here is a landscape. The landscape has many gardens and there are paths between those gardens. But from here, you cannot see the paths. You may see the fences. So what I'm talking about here as a problem is related to chronic diseases, the early stages of those chronic diseases. Uh, there's an anchor pattern on the right side in the patient journal where people are very sick. So you can measure a number of healthcare events, the cost, the burden, the pain, the effect on the families, communities. You can measure a lot of things and we, are, we have a lot of data already for understanding those anchors. And there's like data science, there's innovation stakeholders to do something about those problems. Let's say you isolate a particular pattern. The data scientist can exactly see where it is and what it is. The stakeholders understand the relevance of it. And then you work backwards in the patient journey. You try to find earlier patterns, the first signs of things going bad, the first signs of disease becoming worse, of the signs that we often ignore because as human beings, we tend to react when things are urgent and it tends to be too late. So if I want to do clinical trials with people who have the anchor pattern, it's actually a bit too late to do something. If I want to recruit them in the earlier times, the earlier patterns, we don't have enough knowledge. We don't have enough biomarkers. We have all the AI promises, but it's not really there yet and so on. So this is still very hard at the moment. So it needs a whole ecosystem to address it. And before I go and explain the particular kidney disease challenge, uh, let's just get a bit of a view on what real world data actually are and why they have recently become more of a topic for many people that did not have much encounters with it. So it's not only electronic health records that record like all the healthcare interactions in hospitals and other care organizations. You also have registries, you have wearable data, you have patient experience that's being captured. So you have many perspectives on what happens in patient journeys, but it's very difficult to really put those together and understand them at population or individual level. And this is where new science is nowadays emerging, new technical means and so on that look like they could help us to go into this direction. And as one of the papers, if people are interested in. So this is how we're currently searching for these meaningful patterns that could help us to go into this gray zone before things are urgent, when it would be better to intervene, how to actually do clinical studies there and understand those phenomena, those populations, even observational studies or other ways of better understanding those populations. And the population here would be a person who has a rapid decline of their health. So let's say this would be a few months or a year. Health would be pretty good or at least stable and they have a reasonably independent life, then it goes down. And then you can find them in many of the real world data sets. Actually try to understand who are these patients, could I in principle make a study with them and who are the stakeholders and so on and then nucleate the ecosystem around this anchor pattern. And then together look for the most meaningful, more reliable, reproducible and predictive patterns that help us understand how to actually find these phenomena earlier and how to react. And often we don't know exactly how to intervene and people come, why should I do all this if I don't know how to intervene? But then it's a catch 22, so we need to start somewhere and then test those interventions by having better studies to see if they're actually working or what the effect and impact really is. And in the case of kidney disease, we are building such an ecosystem right now and it's very different, I think, from things we've done in the past. And that gets quite exciting at the moment for the crowd that's involved. So as we increasingly understand also what is this kidney health decline look like in different patient populations, when is that time when it's very likely too late to intervene based on all the information and knowledge that is in the community? So what would be the early time point in this case when the value is above 60, for example, but then in the normal healthcare process, these patients don't have any urgency at all? So this would be a totally new challenge, how to get people engaged, how to make studies possible, how to position biomarkers and AI together to predict who actually needs attention, who has a high risk of going down fast, and who will actually progress slowly and uh, doesn't have that level of urgency. And 
this is where actually when patients go into this health decline, their life is really damaged. Their effect on the families, community is quite hard. And uh, the healthcare system also has a lot of costs and the payers. So there's quite a few stakeholders, but very little activity on this problem. I was amazed in the beginning how little there's going on actually. So this is what leads us to the ecosystem design around this nucleating pattern. Uh, the crowd was forming and this is what we've built so far. Basically, these are paths through all these gardens in the landscape. They are paths from data through several layers to value and learning experiences for the ecosystem. So the ecosystem is a lot about this faster learning box. We have a number of problems we want to solve. They're all very difficult. So right now it's not exactly clear how the path would work, but there are some ideas that can be tested. There's some studies that can be made. There's new biomarkers you can bring in. You can generate new ideas, questions, and hypotheses from this data. And people are starting, the more you have different eyes looking at the same data, the more you see in different angles that other people have missed. And this is what we never get in the established organizations at that level. It's just not the same learning experience and it's really exciting to be part of it. And I think we can also learn quite a lot from the open source movement from how AI runs challenges, very precise challenges with high quality data sets. But then people are totally open how you actually achieve this value and the measurement is clear. So I think there's a few things we can learn from different communities but really go beyond AI and involve more people, more diverse. Thank you.